Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Schnoiki, and today I'm going to show you how to animate a backrooms entity with multiple animations using the free website Mixamo. Let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is create your backrooms environments. Now I've got a tutorial already on how to do that. Uh, it's on the top right corner of your screen right now. Uh, and once you've done that, you'll be able to put the entity in and animate. Uh, as you want. So for this video, I'm just going to put together a simple environment to test the uh, entity animation. So I'm going to put the environment on the back burner for now and we're going to start working on the entity. So to animate our entity we're going to be using the free website Mixamo.com. Now if you watched my last entity tutorial you'll know that this website is amazing. Uh, it's got this whole library of free animations as well as free characters. Uh, and you can use all of these royalty free, you don't have to pay Adobe anything even when it's in commercial projects, so it's an amazing website. However, in the first tutorial I only showed you how to import a character with one animation cycle, I didn't show you how to add multiple. Uh, and in this video I'm going to do exactly that, I'm going to import the character with one animation and then I'm going to show you how to add more onto it and blend them into each other so it looks natural. And I originally got this method from Blender Secrets. This is not my method. I got it from their short video on how to combine Mixamo animations, uh, and I'm just showing you how it applies in a backroom setting. So first I'm switching to Maynard, which is the character I used last time. I think he's absolutely perfect for the backroom's environment. Um, so I'm going to select him as the character. For the first animation, I'm going to search zombie stand up. And editor's note from the future, so for the entirety of this tutorial, I use this zombie stand up animation where he goes from his stomach to a standing pose. Not realizing until the very end of the process that when he gets up, his hands are literally levitating three or four inches above the ground. So it's very important that whatever animation you choose, and you can um, use the method shown in this tutorial for any combination of animations, but whichever one you find, make sure that it doesn't have something like this happening because sometimes they do. You can see in the final product, which is the first time that I saw this uh, happen, uh, he is literally just levitating. So I would recommend um, even though I use this one for the rest of the tutorial, that you apply the same process to this zombie stand-up animation, the second one, because it's got much less levitating happening and looks much more natural. I'm going to click download, FBX binary, 30 frames per second with skin and no keyframe reduction. I'm now going to go back into my blender window and click file, import, .fbx. Here's my file, zombie standup1. I'm going to click import. Now our character is in the scene. I'm going to click the armature or the skeleton, uh, not the actual 3D model because that would mess things up. And I'm going to click GX and move it into the area where I need him to be. If you click spacebar or play button on the timeline, you're going to see the animation playing just fine. Gets up and Nice. He is a little small, I'm going to press S to scale him up, again with the armature selected, not the object. So the animation looks great, however we are running at around 12 frames per second because we're in the material preview window. If you want to have a more accurate look at how fast your animation is, you can go to the solid viewport mode. Uh, and that will play your animation in the speed that it should be. So everything's in the right spot and looking great, but what if I want to add multiple animations to this character? Obviously, it would be very counterintuitive to import a new monster every single time and, and move it and change the scale and match it up exactly with the one I just put here. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to add the animations to this armature that we already have in the scene. So we're going to go back to Mixamo, and I'm going to search Zombie Run. I'm going to use this first zombie running animation, and I'm going to turn up the speed. 
uh, because that makes it look a little bit better and the overdrive as well and you can change all of these sliders uh, as much as you'd like. So now I've got all of the sliders changed as I want them but I'm seeing that each time the animation loops the character keeps going back to the origin point because it moves away from the origin point. So I'm going to click in place uh, and that will allow for this animation to loop and you really want to make sure that in place is selected for animations like this. Now I'm going to click download and have all of the same settings except I'm going to do without skin because you don't need skin for this part of the process. Download that. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. File, import, FBX. I've got my file here, zombie running three. And when I import that, you're going to see it imported to the same spot. But now it's just the armature, which is exactly what we want. Now to add this animation to the monster we already have in the scene, I'm going to go down here to the timeline button where this little clock is. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click Dope Sheet. Once you're in Dope Sheet, click the button that says Dope Sheet and go down to Action Editor. You're now going to see the keyframes for your action uh, and I'm going to name this something uh, that's more recognizable. So I'm going to name it Zombie Run. Once you've done that, go back to your original monster character. You're going to select the armature of the monster Go here to the left, click that little button, and go down to nonlinear animation. In this window, you're going to see uh, the actions for this character and the character we just imported. And I'm going to click this gray button, push down action. And now you're going to see that it's this really cool action bar. Now go back to Dope Sheet, Action Editor, with this uh, armature still selected, and click this little button next to New, and click Zombie Run. One more time, go back to nonlinear animation, and now you can see that both of these actions are connected to this armature, which is great. I'm gonna click the same button here, push down action, and now we've got our two actions assigned to this character. Now to put this zombie run in the right spot, I'm going to left click it and bring it all the way over here. So now he gets up and he snaps into the running animation, which is great, but we want it to be smooth. So first, just to make sure the zombie run animation is correct, I'm going to click N to open up the side panel, go down to strip, action clip, and down here with this repeat bar, I'm going to select 10, or let's go 20, just to be safe. Um, so now uh, you can see that this action is repeating itself. Now I'm gonna go from here up to the blend in slider and when you increase that it suddenly starts to blend in to the animation it's amazing that amount right there actually works you can change this to as as long or as short as you need this transition to be i'm going to change the timing so that it's better timed with how he gets up so right he gets up he's on his feet and then starts running that oh, looks great. Again, make sure that you check on the real speed of this animation in the solid window. So now that I've checked here, I can see that he transitions a little bit too quickly into the run, so I'm gonna move it a little farther. And with different combinations of animations, you might have a harder time blending it in or out, or an easier time. Uh, it depends on the animation. Some of the Mixamo animations are made uh, to be used in tandem, uh, like this one, the zombie run and the zombie get up are in the same group um, but you might have to it'll vary from animation to animation so now i've got the animation as i like it with the perfect amount of fade in uh, so now i'm going to keyframe the running because as you can see he gets up and runs in place uh, and in order to do that you're going to want to go here to the left again uh, and go back to timeline which is the default mode i'm going to click on this circle button to the left of the play button and that is auto keying so that means when i make an edit uh, to the armature it automatically makes a keyframe of that edit so i'm going to see where he gets up where i want him to start moving from and he kind of pushes off with his right foot here into the run so i'm going to make a keyframe i'm going to click g and click and that will automatically create a keyframe. Um, so now he's got a starting keyframe, and now I want to find where the movement ends. So I'm going to move it a little ways. We'll give him a few cycles of running to do, like that. And now I'm going to make sure I'm in a straight line. Click G, 
shift Z, so now it's moving on the X and Y axis only, with the blue uh, circular button still selected, I'm gonna move him this direction. And now when I play it back, you can see that he's running. However, it's not correctly timed. When you look at his feet, you can see that they're kind of sliding along the ground and you don't want that. Uh, so make sure that this ending keyframe uh, is in a spot where uh, he would be. So it's often not going to be perfect, but what you kind of want to get to is where his feet are semi-sticking in the same place in the scene. You don't want him sliding forward or backward because your keyframe is too far forward. And to fix this, you can either scroll up and zoom in on the timeline, get on that keyframe uh, with this blue dot still selected, G, Shift, Z, and move this guy around to change where this keyframe goes. Or if the character is moving in a straight line and you want to easily change the timing, you can slide it back and forth so that, for instance, if I slide it forward, he reaches that point later. So um, you can slide it back and forth as you need. All right, so after eyeballing this for a bit and finding problems with it, I've got an animation that I am happy with. Uh, and you'll see that I have this shaky cam, and this is completely artificial. Uh, Blender Daily has a great tutorial on how to get this effect, so I'll link that in the top right corner of the screen. Now let's get the render settings together. I'm using Cycles with GPU Compute. Uh, and for the render settings, this max samples 4096, that's way large. That's going to take a long time on most people's computers, including mine. So I usually set it to 400. And you also check denoise. Denoise uh, is here in Blender 3.1, that's what I'm using. Um, but it's sometimes at other spots in the scene tab. I'm going to check motion blur because that makes it super realistic. Now for this video, I'm going to set the resolution at 1000 by 563. And this is basically a scaled down version of 1080p. Uh, a lot of people uh, like that square VHS look. Um, and for that, it would be 640 by 480. Um, but I'm going to go for the uh, full screen look this time. 30 frames per second, that's what I usually stick to. And you're also going to want to change your end frame uh, so that it makes sense for the animation. So I'll do it like 260-ish. So I've got my output folder selected here, and I'm going to keep the PNG file format and change it to 16-bit color depth. And the reason why I use PNG is because it renders each frame uh, as an individual picture, which you can then group select and take into a video software. But if something happens to your computer and the file gets corrupted, if you were doing this to, let's say, an FFmpeg video, it would corrupt the whole file. Uh, but if this is going to take a long time, you might as well use PNG. I'm also going to change the focal length of the camera to 38 millimeters. Uh, that often looks a lot better than 50 millimeters, which is the default. And up here to the right, there's the compositing tab. And here I've got a very simple glare node setup. Um, and this makes it a lot more realistic. And these are the settings I really like to use for backrooms videos. To get to this point, you will need to check this box next to use nodes. Once you do that, these two nodes will show up. Then you'll click shift A, click this search bar and type glare and pop that in right in the middle. And again, just copying off what I have here already, changing streaks to fog glow, keep it medium mix is negative 0.3 and it depends on your environment but you can play around with these and the final one that you like uh and yeah that pretty much does it for the glare note and once everything's set up you can go up here to the left click render and click render animation all right so now all the frames are finished it took around three minutes per frame to render at 400 samples uh, so i'm going to select the first frame go down to the bottom shift select the second one and drag these into a DaVinci Resolve window. Now DaVinci Resolve is a free video editor and if you want to use a uh, different software you can, but as you can see when I play it, uh, the animation is playing quite nicely. Now to make the shot better, you're gonna need some audio. So this first audio track is a clip of me breathing and then dropping my phone onto a soft surface so that it has a falling sound for when the camera drops in the video. The next audio tracks are the monster roar. Uh, so to do this, I just take two clips of myself basically yelling and tone them down. So this is what it sounds like normally. Uh, 
and then I basically turn down the semitone bar in DaVinci Resolve, and that tones it down. So I'm gonna change this one to minus 17. I also added some reverb to this clip to make it seem like the creature's in a bigger room. And now when I play it, it sounds a lot more monstery. <laughs> The next audio track is also part of his roar, uh, it's more of a chuckling sound. Um, so again, it's set at negative 17 semitones, I'm gonna set it to zero to show you what it sounds like. And then I tone it down, negative 17. And finally, we've got the footsteps of the monster. I basically put my phone on the ground and ran in place, and this is how it came out. Now I'm gonna unmute all of the other tracks and we'll hear what it sounds like together. <sighs> Alright, that sounds great. Now I'm going to go down here in DaVinci Resolve to this rocket ship button uh, and I'm going to set up all of my render settings. I'm going to change this to MP4, 30 frames per second, make sure you keep it the same as the animation. Uh, and that almost looks like it is all we need to do. I'm going to click add to render queue and start render. And here's the final shot. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you in creating an entity animation. And if it was helpful to you, please consider liking the video and subscribing. It helps me a lot. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. It's absolutely bonkers. Um, so uh, <laughs> that would be amazing if you could subscribe. But yeah, I hope you guys have a blessed day and I will see you all later. Take care.